Hey guys, welcome to Allotronics, I'm Gregory and in this video we are going to understand clock recovery systems. We are going to see how it works and in the end of the video we are going to design a digital PLL to recover a clock of a signal. The full article about this video is in the description. Take your coffee and come with me. Well guys, let's start seeing what we have here. We have here an Arduino Nano microcontroller, an AVR 8 Mega, generating a bit string where the bits are encoded in the level of the signal. And here in the oscilloscope, we can see the bit string being received. So if I pause the bit string here, we can see that we have the data here. We have level high signifying a bit one, a one bit, and level low indicating a zero bit and we have the modulation in the amplitude of the signal indicating the bits of the message being transmitted here probably we have a zero a zero a one a zero a one a zero a zero a zero it's interesting because when you look at this bit string here we have no idea what the transmitter is sending to the receiver side. This type of signal is called non-return to zero, NRZ. And we call it a bit string because we can see it doesn't have a start, it doesn't have an end, it doesn't have any time between frames. It's a continuous string of bits that's being received from the transmitter side. And in this video, we are thinking we are the receiver side. How we are going to decode the signal that's being received from the transmitter? How the receiver will decide when we have a new bit? This is the task of the clock recovery system that needs to recover the timing information, enabling the receiver to decode the bit stream exactly at the correct timing interval exactly in the right places of new bits. This timing information is lost in the transmission of an NRZ signal. And of course, guys, here we have a cable as the transmission media, but it could be a fiber optic. In a real scenario, this would be a very long transmission line made of copper or made of dielectric, like a fiber optic cable. We have two ways of understanding why it's difficult to recover the clock, the timing, of the signal. This is what the receiver is receiving and when we are a, a human it's more easy because we have this optical illusion that when we look to the signal we see the full frame of data and we can easily recognize where we have higher periods, lower periods and more or less the width of each period. So for a human eye it's easy to see that here we have three bits, one, 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 here we have two zeros, zero, zero, here a one, here a zero, one, one. But remember guys, the receiving side is not looking for the data as an image. It has only sensitivity for the level of the line and for past bits, past transitions. It, it can't look to the future. The timing information is lost in this kind of signaling here because you can see that for many combinations of bit sequences, we don't have transitions so we don't have timing information. Of course, the transition of a 1 to a 0 or a 0 to a 1 is clear to understand and is easy to the receiver to detect. But take a look at this period here, guys. Here you have three bits without any transition. So the receiver needs to measure the signal at exactly the correct intervals of time here because if it tries to measure it too fast it's gonna measure a one here but it needs to measure three zeros and if it tries to measure too slowly it's gonna measure four zeros so the receiver needs to have a subsystem a mechanism to try to recover this timing information to be able to measure the signal exactly in the correct points. It's really interesting to see the mathematical explanation for why it's difficult to recover the clock of the signal. We are going to see now the spectrum. We're gonna take the Fourier transform of this signal here and we're gonna see that we don't have any spectral line that easily defines the bit rate. Let's take a look. Look at this, guys. We have here the bit string being received, okay? This is the data that's being in real time transmitted by the Arduino Nano in the other side of the table. And here we have the spectrum of this signal here. We clearly see that we don't have in the spectrum of the signal 
any easy indication of the timing of the signal. We only have here a notch exactly at the baud height. Here we see this notch in 1.2 kilohertz. That is exactly the baud height because I'm transmitting with the Arduino Nano exactly 1200 bouts, 1200 bits per second. This is really interesting guys because exactly in the baud rate, in the frequency we need to use to sample the signal, we have a notch in the spectrum. We don't have information, we don't have energy in the signal about the clocking of the signal. So we need to create a way to recover this information and this is the task of the clock recovery system. The first thing we are going to do is a pretty easy thing. We are going to make an edge detector that will detect the edges of the data bit stream. This is an easy step but will create a different spectrum. This signal here has a different spectrum that's much more helpful to help us recover the clock of the signal. This is the first step for clock recovery. Our goal is to create a digital PLL and this is what we're gonna do. But first, to understand it on the bench, we're gonna use a logic gate as an edge detector and we can easily detect edges of a signal using an XOR gate with a delay in one of the inputs. Because anytime the two inputs are different, the XOR gate will output a pulse. So if we have a delay in one of the inputs, when the data changes, we're gonna have a small difference in the inputs that will generate pulses exactly in the transitions of the data. And this pulsed waveform here has the property of collapsing the spectrum of the NRZ data. Let's take a look on the spectrum of an edge detected data signal. Now we have the B string being transmitted through the transmission media here and it arrives at the edge detector. Well, we have here the signal as we already saw and we can also turn on the other channel here to see the edges. And now we can see that in the green channel we have here a pulse for each edge of received data bit stream. Take a look guys, we have here an edge here, an edge detected here, an edge detected here, an edge detected here. I think we can see it better here turning off the channel one, here only the edges, and we can see here that we have the edges of the signal. And what is interesting about the edges guys, if we have 1200 bits per second here and we have a pulse for each edge, the pulse repetition rate will also be 1200 hertz. So now the edge signal guys, this signal here has a spectrum line, has information about the bit rate of the signal. Look at this guys, here we have the FFT of this signal and now it's clearly to understand the timing of the signal looking at the FFT. We have a very clean frequency line here indicating the baud height of the signal, 1200 bits per second. We are going to lock a PLL on this frequency spur here to generate a very clean signal using this frequency line here as the reference. As this frequency line here comes from the data from the yellow data here, the signal generated by the PLL will be locked to the data stream. PLL is a great option here because we can design a very narrow PLL that will filter very well only the clocking signal and the PLL will continuously generate the clocking signal to decode the data stream, even in the absence of bits, in small absence of bits, because the PLL will keep running and when we have bits again, it will correct its phase based on this signal here. We call it a digital PLL because we are going to implement the PLL in software inside a receiver microcontroller. Here I have another Arduino Nano. So guys, the idea is to have implemented an edge detector. So the microcontroller needs to be sampling the input signal, detecting edges. In its output, we're gonna have the edges of the data. This edges now enters the digital PLL where this, where the PLL will lock to that frequency spurs there that we saw on the oscilloscope. Locking to that frequency, the PLL can synthesize a clock signal in phase and with the correct frequency to decode 
the data stream. After clock recovery, it's easy to decode the signal because we can sample the input data right in the edges of the data clock. A digital PLL is pretty similar to an analog PLL. We need to implement a numeric controlled oscillator, the NCO, that is the counterpart of the VCO in analog PLLs. The loop filter is easily implemented on digital logic using a PI controller, a proportional integral controller. And here we can also use the idea of a sampler, okay? If we sample the phase of the NCO, always we have an edge here. We can see where the phase of the NCO is when an edge arrives and if it's wrong if the phase is advanced or retarded we can correct the phase using the error signal remember guys an nco in a digital implementation is only a phase integrator where the phase is continuous being integrated from zero to 306 degrees okay it's a counter it's only a counter and the sampler is almost a switch the sampler is a switch controlled by the edge detector. When we have an edge on the input data, we close the switch and we capture where the VCO is. Say, let's, see, let's say we, we receive an edge and we sample this phase here. Let's say here this phase is 30 degrees. And now we know that the NCO is 30 degrees advanced in relation to the signal we want to lock here. So the loop filter will generate an error signal that will make the NCO slower to align the phase of the VCO with the phase of the input data edges. A new edge arrives, the switch closed, and we measure the phase of the NCO. Let's say it here. Now we see that we are in a phase of 10 degrees. Well, the correction worked. We bring the NCO phase closer to the edges, but we need to bring it a little more. So we generate an error signal to compensate the phase of the NCO. And in reality, guys, in this example, I'm showing you that the phase reference here is zero. So we want to align the edges with the zero degrees of the NCO. But in reality, in my design here, I align it to nine degrees. So I configure the phase, so I configure the switch here, the sampler, to always align the VCO for a nine degree phase shift in relation to the data. Target here is not zero degrees aligned, it's nine degrees aligned. Nine degrees between the data and the recovered clock is nice because if we sample the data always in the rising edge of the clock here, the recovered clock, as it is delayed by nine degrees, we are always sampling in points where the data is stable. So here we have a transition and we are not sampling in the, tr in the transition. We want to sample a little later here when the transition already happened. So here we decoded one, one, one. And here we decoded a zero. Pretty nice. If you are liking this video, please subscribe to the channel and consider being a Patreon to support the channel, support this project and support these videos. The link for the Patreon is in the description of the video. Let's go! Now we finally have the receiver microcontroller here, reading the bit stream coming from the transmitter there. And here guys, we have two probes to the oscilloscope. We have one probe right on the data stream here that's being received and the other probe is reading the output pin where I'm outputting the clock recovered from the beat string. Let's see what you're gonna do. Look at this, guys. The beat string arriving from the transmitter and here we have the recovered clock from the digital PLL. Take a look at this, guys. Take a look at this, guys. Let me pause here and you're gonna see that the clock is exactly aligned 90 degrees as i explained it for you take a look guys the clock recovered is nine degrees out of phase of the data so if we sample the data now exactly in the rising edges of the clock we are going to decode precisely the data stream coming from the transmitter zero 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 
1011001 and so on. We have a bit of jitter in the output clock because we are oversampling the input data at 32 times here. We are sampling the input pin, the input data bit string 32 times higher than the bit height. This PLL here is working on the discrete domain. So, of course, we're gonna have some discretization of the positions of the rising edges of the clock here. We have clock recovering working with a digital PLL. Please take a look on the article in the description of the video to understand how I develop it. And there I also have the source code of the Arduino. Okay, guys, we have the clock edges to decode the bit string. But how we are going to know when a new frame starts? Where is the bit zero, the bit one? Because we need to properly decode the bit zero, the bit one, the bit two. We can't decode it, misalign it. This is pretty important. This step comes after clock recovery. Now we have exactly the clocks to recover the bits. And for this example here, I used a technique called frame syncing. How it works, guys? In the beginning of the message, we're gonna attach a noun word. Here I'm using 24 bits. So in the beginning of any message, we attach 24 noun bits. So we can search for these bits to understand where is the start of a frame. When we find these 24 bits we know, we know that the next bit is the bit zero of the message. We are doing this right now here and we have other output pin in the receiver Arduino that is being toggled always that it finds a new frame header. Let's see. This output pin here is toggled always that we receive the now 24 bits of the header of the frame. So let's trigger the oscilloscope on channel 3. And guys, take a look now how the signal is stable because now we are synchronized with the start of the frame. So always we have this toggle here, guys. We know that the first 24 bits are the frame header and the next bit after the frame header is actually this one actually this one here guys this is the bit zero of the message this is the bit one of the message beautiful well guys i hope you enjoyed this video if so please subscribe to the channel leave a comment send to your friends and i see you in the next video of our electronics channel